With setup and testing out of the way, it's time to install some cable. We put a lot of thought into designing the Gulfstream to be extremely simple to operate with user-friendly controls that you will have mastered in no time. Let's see it in action. So now that we've performed our crash test, it's time to install some cable. Here I have our cable we're going to be working with today. What I'm going to do is slide it into the back end of our Gulfstream 300 here. The next thing I'm going to want to do is get some cable seals for our size of Piper. I'm going to go to our seal kit and get our uh, seal size we need for our cable. Now the Gulfstream 300 takes two cable seals, so we'll get those two seals out of this bag here. And we can take and slide them onto the cable like so. We want to make sure that the cone is pointing down the duct that we're going to be installing into. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is get the duct pack for our specific size duct that we're going to be installing into. So I'm going to go to our duct pack kit here. We open this up and we get our size duct pack that we're going to need. And inside this duct pack includes the, uh, the duct seals. We'll take the uh, end of the duct and we'll slide the cable seals on just like so. So next I'm going to take the duct pack and we'll take the bottom half that has the air inlet here and we'll insert that into the air block. We'll make sure we line it up properly in there with the grooves. And we'll take our cable with our cable seals and position them like that inside of the duct pack. All right, the next step to do is take our duct with our duct seals, slide it over the cable, and position it inside of the duct pack. Take the top half, Sandwich it all together, close it down, and secure it tight. Okay, so now that we have our cable routed through our Gulfstream 300 and our duct brought into our air block with our duct seals and our cable seals, we can uh, close our guard, make sure our hands are free, and we power up the machine so that we don't have any uh, unintentional startups that could cause injury. So first, we'll do our air. We'll take our air compressor hose here, and we'll come and plug it in. Okay, so we got our air hose connected. Next, we'll hook up our battery pack. What we're gonna wanna do next is recall our clamp force down setting and our push force setting that we established in the crash test. So here, we're gonna crank this down. We reference our etched marks here on the shaft. And then we'll go to our push force menu here on the Gulfstream 300, and we'll set our push force according to what we established in the crash test. Now before we can begin any installation, we want to clear out the distance meter. So you just hold the select reset button for a couple seconds, and you should see that the distance has cleared. And I like to install on the third menu, which toggles between distance and speed. You kind of know where I'm at at all times. So I want to have the speed all the way down, and I push the forward uh, to engage the tractor drive, and I slowly increase the speed. So now we don't want to add any air yet until we get enough fiber into the duct. To get a good amount of fiber into the duct, and as your speed starts slowing down with just push force, gradually add air as needed to get that speed back up. Okay, so now that we got some fiber installed, our speed's starting to slow down a little bit, we're gonna introduce some air. Just need to introduce just a little bit as needed to pick that speed right back up. All right, and again, we have speed has dropped some, so we're gonna add another bar to a pressure, and we keep doing this to keep the speed going. So we keep adding air as our speed drops, just to keep that installation speed going. And now I'm at maximum air pressure available. Okay, now we're reaching the end of our kilometer run. Coming out the other end, we're going to slow the machine down, disengage the tractor drive, shut off the air, and that's fiber optic cable installation with the Gulfstream 300. A quick note about lubricant, uh, if you're wondering whether or not to use it in your installation, say you're working with multiple bends or a larger ID duct or you're trying to achieve greater distances, uh, that's the type of application 
you'd want to use lubricant for. Conox offers a wide range of silicon-based lubricants for your fiber blowing, but as always, consult your fiber or duct manufacturer for their recommendation on your specific application.